Hi there. This is just a short continuation to the first Stromberg Carlson repair and align video, the uh, 240H chassis. That uh, video turned out to be over an hour long, and I skipped just a couple of small parts in order to shorten it up a bit. So I'll add them in here. So on this radio, it has a variable IF control right here, and it allows you to select three different curves of IF. You get a narrow, a wide, and then a barn door setting. And then right down at the bottom, you have two extra settings, which include just putting these two capacitors across the plate circuit of the 6F5 audio amplifier. So what that does is that's basically you've got two audio filters and then three IF settings all in one control. So these capacitors get connected directly into the plate circuit of the 6F5 tube and they basically have zero charge on them and then when you turn this knob and then you come to the audio filters it goes crack crack into the speaker uh, when you when you turn these down to the bottom settings until these caps are charged and then you can turn them and after that they don't pop anymore. But uh, for the first initial time you do it, it gives you this horrible crack and if you wait about five or 10 minutes, you'll get that crack again if you adjust it. That's really hard on the speaker and it is kind of nauseating. So how you can eliminate that is just by adding two one meg ohm resistors from the center of the, uh, the switch here, the B plus side, to each capacitor. So what these two one meg resistors do is they pre-charge those uh, capacitors for you and they don't affect the audio because the resistance of the uh, of the uh, uh, one mega ohm resistors is so high that it just it, it doesn't affect the tone whatsoever so by doing that you eliminate that horrible popping noise and um, makes it a little bit easier to uh, listen to now they didn't include those from the factory either so I imagine a lot of people that owned this chassis were probably uh, probably uh, angry at that feature because if you have a big speaker in like one of their larger console radios that would really move that speaker. This has got push-pull audio and it takes no prisoners especially when those two caps come in. So this is the switch right here and this is the cap here this is a 0 0.01 and this is a 0 0.002 and this switch as you can see will uh, connect these these caps go directly to ground which is the chassis and what it does is it comes up here and then when you turn the switch here it'll contact either one and it applies the plate lead of the 6F5 directly to these caps so these caps are originally they're drained there's no charge on them and then when you put this in uh, it has to instantly charge this cap through this 100k resistor and uh, it really creates quite a loud popping noise in the speaker so as I say just put one a uh, one meg resistor you know from the center of the switch to this cap and from the center of the switch to this cap and it'll eliminate your popping noise you know quite nicely now of course if you first turn the radio on and you're doing you know moving that switch around just the minute that it warms up you'll still get a little bit of a pop because uh, what happens is in this radio the uh, rectifier tube is a 5u4 and it's a directly heated tube and it only takes about three seconds for that to, f to come on and you get full B plus everywhere in about three seconds whereas all the rest of the tubes are indirectly heated which means that they have a cathode sleeve inside the tube and they take about 11 seconds to warm up so what happens is the voltage surge is very high for about the first you know 11 seconds and then it starts to come down again as all the tubes start to pull current again so as the voltage goes high it's going to charge these two caps through these two resistors up to that full potential and then it will have to through these resistors again as the tubes warm up pull it back down to the plate potential of the 6F5 so you know if you do this safely after about a minute or so anytime after I would say probably uh, a minute or so or uh, I haven't actually, you know, measured the time, but you'll see that it'll it'll level off at after that point. You'll be just fine. So that's that. Uh, I also didn't show you how to tune the wave trap, and the wave trap is a pretty simple thing to tune. Down at the bottom, we see this capacitor here. Normally, there these resistors aren't in the way, and if you watch the first video, you'll find that uh, the reason why these resistors are here. So how you tune this, this capacitor here is you, you have to run a screwdriver down through here. Now both of these tabs here are both grounds, so it's pretty safe to do that at any time through here. But once this is aligned, you pretty much don't have to do it again. And how you do it is you turn your, this radio to the A band, you turn, tune the dial to 1 megahertz or 1.0 on the dial, you feed a 465 kc signal into the back of the radio through a, a 200 picofarad capacitor. Now it has to be quite a bit of signal, it has to be pretty stout. And um, what you do is you look at the, um, 
this also, by the way, has to be wide open. The attenuator is wide open. There's no attenuation at this point. And then what you do is you watch the eye tube on the front of the radio. And you'll notice that when you start putting a lot of uh, uh, 465 KCs into the input jack, you'll notice that the uh, eye will start to try and close. So what you're wanting to do is tune that capacitor until the eye goes to its maximum opening, not closing. Like when you're tuning it, you're looking for a maximum closing. Well, this is the opposite. You're looking for maximum opening. So you tune this capacitor very carefully because it's very touchy. It's a notch filter. You just pass that point and it'll, it'll uh, open and close again. So what you do is you very carefully move it until the eye's at its widest and it starts to come back in and you back it up until it's at its widest again. And you've successfully tuned your uh, uh, wave trap filter in the front of your radio. So that wave trap filter is just to try and keep the IF out of the antenna circuitry and all that stuff. That's the reason it's called a wave trap. It traps it there. So when you're putting your signal generator, 465 KC signal in there, it's also trying to notch that out. And that's what you're seeing on that eye. When you tune that eye until it's at its maximum opening, it's just notching that, uh, that uh, 465 KC signal out. And that's how easy it is to do that. One other thing about this radio, and uh, you'll probably know if you've ever serviced any of these old 240H chassis, and if you haven't, well, you'll know now. These uh, audio controls are really picky, and they open up all the time, and they get scratchy and finicky, and you touch them, and the volume gets high and low, and, and uh, you would think that the uh, resistive aperture inside of it is cracked. Well, it's not actually most of the time. What happens is, is there's two brass pop rivets in the top of these uh, tabs here where you solder the wires to on the top here. And the connection between those brass rivets and the, uh, the resistive layer inside the, the actual carbon track inside that potentiometer gets bad. So you have to drill out those little brass rivets very carefully without busting that carbon track inside there. And you put two little brass screws in there and uh, retighten them down and then uh, your potentiometer is good to go again. I find that the connections on the back side here, they're just a crimp fit. They stay pretty good. So this potentiometer is a very special potentiometer and you don't want to swap it out unless you absolutely have to. There's uh, five taps in total on this potentiometer. So uh, in that is uh, dealing with the tone circuitry inside of this uh, radio. So if you just sub it out with a standard three uh, section potentiometer, you'll really lose a lot of the, uh, the, uh, the tone and um, you know, the way that the, the radio is actually supposed to operate. And uh, believe me, by, uh, by putting a, a three, you know, a, a three terminal potentiometer in here, it really does affect the tone. You lose the bass and all that kind of stuff. So it's a pretty special control. They spent a lot of time designing that. So you want to try and restore that control. This one restored quite nicely and works very, very well. And uh, you, you, of course, you put just a little bit of grease on the track, I find. And then uh, that way they last and they don't, you know, go away for a long, long time. The, um, uh, you know, they're pretty dry when you open them up. So you want to make sure that you put a bit of lubricant on there or, you know, the there's a, like a steel roller inside there and that roller doesn't roll. It's just they're using one portion of that roller to rub the track. Uh, it'll very quickly destroy that if you don't lubricate it. So you do want to lubricate that carbon track inside there. And uh, once you've done it, you'll have a, uh, a nice, uh, nice working audio control. And I think that's pretty much it. I can show you this uh, just quickly down on the bottom here. I'll show you this, the, uh, the bottom uh, series aligner for the B band and the A band. This is the series aligner right here for the B band. And this is the center is the series aligner for the A. Now they're kind of concentric. This out one, the outside nut turns uh, and doesn't affect the inside slotted screw slot here. And uh, each one of them aligns a different band. As I say, the nuts for the B and the center is for the A band and the center is the uh, broadcast band. So you use these capacitors up here to align the top end of the band. It doesn't affect these at all. These, this is the antenna and the, uh, and the uh, RF section. These are the ones that align the band right here. So these adjust the top ends of the band and then this one here, right down at the bottom here, adjusts the low end of the band. The very top band only has one adjustment. The very top short wave band that goes up to 18 megs only has one adjustment and that's that, this one here. So it goes uh, 18 megs here. And then this is the center band, and then this is the broadcast band, and they go like this all the way back. 
So this is 18 megahertz oscillator RF and antenna. And then this is the middle band oscillator RF and antenna. And then this is the broadcast band, um, the top end of course, being all the bands oscillator RF and antenna. And that's how they work. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll uh, and um, hope this uh, aids you in the repair of your Stromberg Carlson 240H chassis. If you have any questions or anything, just post them in the comments and I'll try and answer them and uh, and uh, help you out with your uh, with your old radio questions. All right, take care.